Welcome to Georgia and its picturesque capital city, Tbilisi. This location is a real hidden gem, with wonderful architecture set against a backdrop of stunning natural beauty. It's a location which is a regular stop for the World Judo Tour, and which now once again welcomes the sport with typical Georgian hospitality. Judo is a big deal here, and as always, there was a packed out crowd in attendance, as avid fans gathered to support not just their local heroes, but also a rich crop of international superstars. There was a strong French women's team, and we took time to talk to under 70 kilogram fighter Marie-Yves Gay in our latest Meet Your Judoka feature. And we'll follow the exploits of one of the home nation's biggest judo heroes, Guram Tushishvili. We start at under 63 kilograms, where world champion Clarice Sagbegnanou was leading the charge for France. In her chair as coach was Lucy de Cos, one of judo's all-time greats. And Agbegnanou executed an Oichigari, which de Cos herself would have been proud of in her opening contest. It was followed by another Ippon against Brazil's Yanka Pascualina, after she threw with Harai Makikomi and held on for the win. Awaiting her in the final would be Polish fighter Karolina Talak, who came up with this impressive Uchimata in her semi-final contest against Australian Katarina Haker. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Lucy Dikos, the former Olympic champion, now coach, of course, and, well, Agbeg Nanu, she's got an Ouchi as well! There it is, Ouchi Gary! And Talak goes cleanly onto her back. That was a really nice Ouchi there from Agbeg Nanu. Back to the very best form, and look at the drive she gets off that back leg there. Drives off the back leg, and takes her onto her back. She's straight into the hold down, just in case. But now, if it rolls, if it has all the ingredients, it's still a nip on. She knew exactly what she wanted. She hops into the Ouchi. She gets the drive. Look at the back leg there. Look at the control of the upper part of the body. Brilliant stuff from Agbeg Nanu. See it from the different angle here. Look at the sleeve grip. Pulls downwards and she had control all the way through. And Agbeg Nanu is back on top. Emotions were high at under 70 kilograms, as Mariam Chanturia showed that Georgia's women can be just as formidable as their men, when she became her nation's youngest ever World Judo Tour medal winner. But it was France who were once again dominating, this time through rising star Marie-Yves Gaye. The best moment of her path to the final came at the semi-final stage against Germany's Sandra Diedrich, who she flattened for a spectacular Ippon win. In the final, she would face Canada's Kalita Zupancic. At just 21 years of age, Gay was going for her fourth World Judo Tour gold medal. Would Zupancic be able to stop her? Well, Sapadzic left-handed, Gahi right-handed. Now then, oh, good attack there by Sapadzic, but she is in trouble here, and that backfired on her. Look at that, she tries for the Yoko Satemiwaza, and it didn't quite work, and that was great transition there from Gahi. It really was. She knew exactly where she was, and she's gonna hold her for Ippon here. Rising star, Gahi, she really is, and that was a good win for her. Her fourth World Tour gold, and, well, she really is a rising star. Yet another gold medal for Gahi, as she goes from strength to strength. We got to know her better in our latest Meet Your Judoka feature. I started judo when I was seven uh, because I had a lot of energy and a friend of my mother tell her, tell her it's a good idea to, to start judo. My favorite throw is uh, Tanyo Tushi uh, because I like surprising people and uh, sometimes I use the feint before changing direction. My favorite technique uh, in Niwaza is Katagatame 
because uh, I found the transition uh, very easy from uh, when we are turned up to the new weather. Um, my best memory from uh, IGF World Tour is uh, in Paris Grand Slam um, because this is my third time uh, I participate to this competition and this is the first time uh, I got a medal. So uh, behind all my family and my friends and friends, French people, it was really amazing. So this is my best memory at home, Paris. So. I like a lot of music, but uh, I think I prefer um, funk from Brazil. You know, it's very <laughs> so it's good. So I like. It. Uh, my favorite food is an African food. Uh, its name is aloku and achiki. It's from uh, Africa, and uh, my mother cooking very well. My favorite film is Inception. Uh, I love this film. Uh, it's, it's unreal, you know, and they mix the real and the unreal, so it's very interesting for me. I like this movie. For me, my hero is my, my mother because um, she representing a strong woman of, of our day. She's a mother, worker, she's a wife, she's a lot of things. So uh, this is my, my hero. I would like to be like her. My, my favorite game is to play there with my friend. Whenever they ask me to do, even if it's stupid, I will do it. I learned a lot of, uh, about who I am uh, in judo and uh, the world of judo are uh, like my second family. The under 81 kilogram division saw a young Georgian making waves on home soil. Tamazi Karakazashvili was on fire, showing off his incredible throwing skills as he blitzed his way to the final. This Ippon against Russia's Stanislav Semenov of particular note. Standing between Karakazashvili and gold, was Portugal's Anriego Tidze. Could he stop Georgia's young dynamo? Well, this could be anybody's match. But he's been on great form, Karakazashvili. Now then, what's going to happen here? Oh, he's gone in for the Shimiwaza. And he switches it. He switched it to the old side, Kami. And look at that. Kami Shioga Tami. And it all started, well, first of all for the Juji. Then he went for the Shimiwaza. And as he turned, he just turns it into the offside Kumi. That was a brilliant bit of Newaza there. And Karikazas Philly, who's been on great form all day, has just shown us what he can do on the ground. That was brilliant. What a gold medal win that was. Egotitsi made a mistake. Went in for the Sienagi, left his arm up, and that was his big mistake. But then this man here, Krikazashvili just took advantage of it and his transition was superb. The standard of judo in Tbilisi was excellent and we were hard pressed to choose our best three Ippons. In at number three was a special moment for Georgian fighter Matiashvili, who met Hamza Ochani for plus 100 kilogram bronze. Ashvili just looking to control that sleeve. Now he's got the angle. Uchimata! Oh, what an Uchimata! Brilliantly taken there. Ochani, just a little smile, but that was brilliantly taken from Matiashvili. Found the way in, and the crowd celebrate. Look at that. Hops the uh, support leg central, and then it's all over. Good control with the hands as well. What a win by Matiashvili. Our number two Ippon came as Israel's Lee Kochman faced Cyril Grossklaus for under 90 kilogram bronze. This is anybody's match. Into golden score now, and who's it going to be? Oh, Sanagari! Oh, it's going to be Kochman! What an Osoto that was! And look at that, Grossklaus 
is beside himself there because he put his head down, actually. And that Osoto Gary, what a driving Osoto, takes him right the way over. And that was brilliantly taken. 12 seconds into golden score, and it's all over. Cockman scoring a massive Ippon. Our number one Ippon came at under 81 kilograms, as Semenov met Kazakh Aziz Kalkamanuli. Well, we're gonna go into golden score. And uh, a lot of golden scores end early. Now what's gonna happen here? Something's gonna happen! No! Oh, that's gonna happen! And it was Semenov waiting for the right moment. Look at that, as soon as he had round the waist there, it was only gonna go one way and it was upwards and over. Brilliantly taken there. Look at that lapel hand as well. Look at the determination on his face. And he takes him all the way up, all the way over. And it was brilliantly executed. What a win. There was a maiden gold on the World Judo Tour for Slovenia's Marusa Stanga at under 48 kilograms. After she countered Serbia's Melissa Nikolic for a Wazari before holding on for the win. There was another French gold at under 52 kilograms as Amandine Bouchard came through the pack. Two strong Wazari scores in the final against Evelyn Schopp ensured she would take gold in Tbilisi for the second year running. It was Bouchard's fourth World Judo Tour gold as things are starting to work for the former junior world champion at senior level. The under 57 kilograms saw France on track for another gold with Hélène Reservo on great form. But after shining in her elimination bouts, she would be eclipsed by Germany's Theresa Stoll in the final. Stoll scored in the last minute of the contest, latching onto the outside of Resovo's leg and driving forwards for a Wazari, which would ultimately settle the contest. Brilliant stuff from Stoll. France were back on track at under 78 kilograms, as veteran Audrey Chameo defeated Anastasia Turchin in the final by Ippon, after capitalising on the ground to secure a pin. Yet another gold for the former world champion's collection. And at over 78 kilograms, France boasted their youth once again, as 18-year-old Roman Dicko defeated Marina Slutskaya of Belarus in the final, throwing for Wazari before holding on to secure the win. It was the icing on the cake of a great event for France. The under 60 kilogram division saw Georgia's Amiran Papanashvili on track for a home win, as he pleased the crowd with some great judo on his path to the final. However, there would be a twist in the tail, as his compatriot Lakumi Chukvimiani denied him the gold for the second year running, after catching him with a quick counter-attack for a Wazari in golden score. He was awarded the gold medal by Mr. Mikhail Georgiadze, Georgian Minister of Culture and Sport. And he was joined by two more of his countrymen after both Lasha Chadunelli and Timur Nozadze produced fantastic Ippons in their bronze medal contests. A proud moment for Georgian judo as the podium was made up entirely of their athletes. And the Georgian flag was flying once more at under 66 kilograms after Vaja Margvalashvili took gold. The best action was found in the bronze medal matchup between Daniel Jean of France and Ali Reza Khojaste of Iran. This spectacular Osotogari Ippon from Jean earning him a well-deserved medal. Up one weight at under 73 kilograms and Georgia's 2012 Olympic champion put in an accomplished performance to take gold. This Haramakikomi Ippon against Giovanni Esposito of Italy was the highlight of his day, as he eventually defeated his compatriot Gigani in the final. There was a bizarre looking moment in one of the bronze medal contests, as both Shmakov and Van to Westend of the Netherlands attacked simultaneously. In the end, the winner was decided by the Dutchman's body movement, which helped him come out on top. And finally, Brazilian Rafael Macedo took his first World Judo Tour gold at under 90 kilograms, after an impressive display of judo, which included this Ippon against Iran's Vahid Nouri. In the final, he defeated Georgi Papanashvili to deny the home nation another gold. The under 100 kilograms division saw Cancun Grand Prix winner Peter Palchik in fine form as he threw Georgia's Iasoni Nemzadze for Ippon with this dropping shoulder throw, 
to make it through to the gold medal contest. There, he would be up against Russia's Merab Margiev. Strong fight for grips, as you would expect. This is the final, of course. Now, oh, what a beautifully executed, well, was it Osoto, Ogaruma? It was brilliant. Palchik there had the Kumakata, he had the sleeve, he had the lapel. Look how he comes across there, and he drives it across at the angle. And it was brilliant, Tewaza, which is all about the hand control and how you drive your opponent where you want him to go. Look at that, pulling on the sleeve, pushing on the lapel, and he puts him cleanly on his back there, the biggest dip on, and Palchik wins the gold medal for Israel. A perfect example of how the hands and the feet work together. What a skillful piece of judo from Palchik. We asked Neil to take us through it in more depth in our dojo. What an amazing example of the hands and the feet working together. And what an amazing ippon at the end. Let's just have a little look to see how he did it. For me, the good thing about this was the hands working together with the feet. And the Kazushi hand, or the control hand on this occasion, was pulling towards himself, but the Saruti hand, or direction hand, was pushing in the opposite direction. So we had this kind of action, and the head was under control all the time. But it was the catch with the leg here, onto the knee, turning it into, it was Osoto for sure in the direction that it was going, but then everything just happened all at once, and it was a real driving Osoda Gary. Good control with the hands, hands and feet working together, and that's what made it such a special Ippon. Our final category, the over 100 kilograms, featured Guram Tushishvili, one of Georgia's most exciting superstars. After becoming World Masters Champion at the end of 2017, his 2018 has not gone well so far. With his last two outings, producing no medals. With some now questioning the hype, here on home soil, Tushishvili was looking to bounce back. In his opening bout against Azerbaijan's Jalil Shukarov, he made a statement, igniting the home crowd with a brilliant Harai Goshi for Ippon. He then took on Jur Spikers of the Netherlands, and after securing his opponent's right sleeve, he launched his trademark, dropping Sodi Tsurikomi Goshi for yet another big Ippon win. At the semi-final stage, he saw off his compatriot Matiashvili, throwing once again off the sleeves, before following up to catch his teammate in a pin. So far, everything was going to plan. He would face Javad Majub of Iran in the final. The former under 100 kilogram fighter had defeated Tushishvili's teammate, Onise Bugadze, in the other semi-final. Could he make a nuisance of himself in the final against Tushishvili? As the pair came out to contest the gold medal, the noise inside the arena was deafening. Everyone was behind Tushishvili. Could he get Georgia their final gold medal of the Grand Prix? Or would Maju spoil the party? Well, Tushishvili, absolutely the favorite here, on home ground as well. But anything can happen. I think they're both here to fight. Both hooked up, left to left at the moment. So what is going to happen here? Somebody's going to attack. Oh, look at that! Now then, was Harry given? I don't think that was. I think that uh, his back didn't hit the ground. But a massive Sasai Surakami Ashi there by Maju. Look at that, one elbow to the other. Back didn't touch, absolutely for me it didn't touch, but the referee gave it, I think it'll be overruled actually. It was a great situation, yes, it's been taken off. No was Harry given. What a start there from Maju. Maju opens up the account. It's definitely taken off, and so no was Harry. So all evens again, and Maju is here to fight. Big left hand over the top. And he says, I want a little bit more of this. 
And Tushish Vili all of a sudden knows he's got his work cut out here. Massive hit technique. Look at that. Big Ogoshi and a big overthrow there. And Majub almost scores again. He has the belt. It's a massive surigoshi, actually. And he goes onto his head there, but he couldn't stop himself going onto his head. Touches Vili, and he does a Barani, lands on his front, no score. It was huge. Still no score. What is going to happen next? Majub is all over him. Oso Nagari to Osoto. That front leg is the danger. Oh, and he's counting him backwards there. It went, and it's definitely a Wazari this time. And Tushisvili has been taken over because it was Tushisvili that looked as if he was going to counter Majub. Majub counters the counter and takes him onto his side for a definite Wazari. That was brilliant. And now he's down. Can he possibly bring this back? Because I'm telling you now, Majub is winning this match. It's going to be a miracle if Tushisvili can dig deep. He'll have to dig deep, actually. Drops in Aggie here from Tushisvili. And Majub looks tired. Oh, no. Could he get the hold down? He has got the hold down. And Majub has been all over him, all the way through. And he's in trouble here because now the seconds are ticking up. And he's holding him down here, touches Vili. The crowd are going absolutely mad. He looks up at the clock. He's got to hold him for 20 seconds. He's already got the Missouri. It's all over. Touches Vili wins the gold medal. Look at his face there. That's half relief. And the crowd are going mad because they have just seen something quite remarkable. Mashu came out. He didn't care that he was fighting Tushisvili or the crowd, and he took the fight to Tushisvili. Perhaps the number two heavyweight there to Teddy Riner at the moment, and he came out and he didn't care. He had to dig deep. Sinagi started it off. That was the first real good attack from Tushisvili. Then he came up on top, and you could see that Majub was starting to get a little bit tired. Tries for the Sangaku turn. Didn't hook him with the legs, but fell into the hole down here. Majub tries to escape, and then Tushishvili ties up the head. He drives him onto his back here, and Majub, well, he was trying not to let him settle, but in the end he did. Held him for the 20 seconds, and credit to this man, Tushishvili, because he dug deep. It was absolute brilliance from him, but it was brilliance from Majub as well. What a heavyweight final, and what a Grand Prix. I was expecting the final to be very tough because I knew my opponent very well. This isn't the first time I have fought him and he is very, very strong, which is why it was such a hotly contested final. And I have to say, the crowd helped me so much and I want to thank the Georgian people for creating such an incredible atmosphere during the final. I will prepare even better next time and try to make less mistakes. So for another year, it's time to say goodbye to Georgia, as the Tbilisi Grand Prix draws to a close. Once again, this judo crazy nation did not disappoint, delivering a fitting ambience for the stars of the World Judo Tour to ply their trades. Next week, we'll be in Antalya, Turkey, which plays host to our next Judo Grand Prix.